the Andromeda Galaxy was a pivotal discovery that shattered our Earth-centric view of the universe, revealing that the Milky Way is just one of many galaxies in existence. However, recent data from the James Webb Telescope has suspended previous assumptions about the Andromeda Galaxy. What new insights has the James Webb Space Telescope provided regarding the Andromeda Galaxy? And how has this altered previous assumptions about its nature and behavior? Join us as we dive into the shocking event of James Webb Telescope. Shutting down and receiving alarming signal from the Andromeda Galaxy. But before we delve into the revelations, we need to understand some important context. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is a space telescope designed to conduct infrared astronomy. Its high-resolution and high-sensitivity instruments allow it to view objects too old, distant, or faint for the Hubble Space Telescope. This enables investigations across many fields of astronomy and cosmology, such as observation of the first stars and the formation of the first galaxies, and detailed atmospheric characterization of potentially habitable exoplanets. The web was launched on December 25, 2021, on an Ariane 5 rocket from Kourou, French Guiana. In January 2022, it arrived at its destination, a solar orbit near the Sun and Earth, L2 Lagrange Point about 1.5 million kilometers, which is 930,000 miles from Earth. The telescope's first image was then released to the public on July 11, 2022. The U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, led Webb's design and development and partnered with two main agencies, the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Canadian Space Agency, CSA. The NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, GSFC in Maryland, manages telescope development, while the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore on the Homewood campus of Johns Hopkins University operates Webb. The primary contractor for the project was Northrop Grumman. The telescope is named after James E. Webb, who was the administrator of NASA from 1961 to 1968, during the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. Webb's primary mirror consists of 18 hexagonal mirror segments made of gold-plated beryllium, which together create a 6. 5-meter diameter, 21-feet mirror compared with Hubble's 2.4-meter, 7 feet, and 10 inches. Webb also has a light collecting area, of around 25 square meters, which is about six times larger than Hubble. And unlike Hubble, which observes light in the near ultraviolet and visible spectra from 0.1 to 0.8 micrometers, and in the near infrared from 0.8 to 2.5 micrometers, Webb observes a wider range of frequencies. It captures light from long wavelength visible light red through mid infrared, spanning from 0.6 to 28.3 micrometers. To ensure accurate observations, the telescope must be kept extremely cold. Below 50 Kelvin, that's around minus 223 degrees Celsius, or minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit. To prevent infrared light emitted by the telescope itself from interfering with the collected light, its five-layer sun shield shields it from warming caused by the sun, earth, and moon. How then does the sheer magnitude of Webb's 6.5 meter gold-plated mirror challenge our understanding of the universe and our place within it? And what implications does this hold for our future exploration of space? Do you think humans can evolve enough to make it in Milkometa, or would we perish in this new galaxy? Keep watching to find out more. Initial designs for the James Webb Telescope, then named the Next Generation Space Telescope, began in 1996. Two concept studies were commissioned in 1999 for a potential launch in 2007 and a $1 billion U.S. dollar budget. The program was plagued with enormous cost overruns and delays. 
A major redesign was accomplished in 2005, with construction completed in 2016, followed by years of exhaustive testing at a total cost of 10 billion US dollar. Features of the James Webb Telescope The mass of the James Webb Space Telescope is about half that of the Hubble Space Telescope. Webb boasts a primary mirror crafted from gold-coated beryllium, measuring 6.5 meters or 21 feet in diameter. Composed of 18 separate hexagonal mirrors, this mirror features a polished area spanning 26.3 square meters or 283 square feet. Of this polished area, 0.9 square meters or 9.7 square feet is obscured by secondary support struts, resulting in a total collecting area of 25.4 square meters or 273 square feet. This impressive collecting area surpasses that of Hubble's 2.4 meter or 7.9 foot diameter mirror, which only offers 4.0 square meters or 43 square feet of collecting area. To enhance its infrared reflectivity, the mirror is coated with gold and then protected by a thin layer of glass for added durability. Webb is designed primarily for near-infrared astronomy, but can also see orange and red visible light, as well as the mid-infrared region, depending on the instrument being used. It can detect objects up to 100 times fainter than Hubble can, and objects much earlier in the history of the universe, back to redshift with Z, approximately 20, about 180 million years after the Big Bang. For comparison, the earliest stars are thought to have formed between Z, approximately 30, and Z, approximately 20, which is 100 to 180 million years in cosmic time, and the first galaxies may have formed around redshift, with Z approximately 15, about 270 million years in cosmic time. However, Hubble is unable to see further back than very early reionization in 400 million years of cosmic time. The design emphasizes the near to mid-infrared for several reasons. High redshift, very early and distant objects have their visible emissions shifted into the infrared, and therefore their light can be observed only via infrared astronomy. Infrared light passes more easily through dust clouds than visible light. Colder objects such as debris disks and planets emit most strongly in the infrared. These infrared bands are difficult to study from the ground or by existing space telescopes such as Hubble. Rough plot of Earth's atmospheric absorption or opacity to various wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation including visible light. Ground-based telescopes must look through Earth's atmosphere, which is opaque in many infrared bands, see figure at right. Even where the atmosphere is transparent, many of the target chemical compounds, such as water, carbon dioxide, and methane, also exist in the Earth's atmosphere, vastly complicating analysis. The current space telescopes like Hubble aren't able to observe these specific bands because their mirrors aren't cool enough. The Hubble mirror stays at about 15 degrees Celsius, which means the telescope emits a lot of infrared radiation in those bands. Webb can also observe objects in the solar system at an angle of more than 85 degrees from the sun and having an apparent angular rate of motion less than 0.03 arc seconds per second. This includes Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, their satellites, and comets, asteroids, and minor planets at or beyond the orbit of Mars. Webb has the near-IR and mid-IR sensitivity to be able to observe virtually all known Kuiper Belt objects. In addition, it can observe opportunistic and unplanned targets within 48 hours of a decision to do so, such as supernovae and gamma-ray bursts. The Mysteries of the Milky Way Galaxy Just over a century ago, the Milky Way was commonly thought of as a band of faint, wispy, whitish light stretching across the night sky. 
In ancient times, our perception of the Milky Way was limited by the technology of the era, hindering astronomers from distinguishing individual stars within it. People held diverse beliefs about the Milky Way, often viewing it as the nexus of creation where the celestial and terrestrial realms converged. However, it was Galileo Galilei, an Italian astronomer, who transformed our understanding of the Milky Way in the early 17th century. Utilizing his pioneering telescope, he made groundbreaking observations that challenged prevailing cosmological theories. Galileo revealed that the Milky Way wasn't merely a diffuse band of light, but a vast amalgamation of distinct stars, planets, and celestial bodies. Interestingly, the Andromeda Galaxy, our closest galactic neighbor, lies within the Milky Way's vicinity, and astronomers estimate there are approximately 100 billion galaxies within the observable universe. This astonishing revelation implies that the number of stars in the visible universe is indeed countable. Galileo's observations shattered the notion that the Milky Way occupied a central position in the cosmos, instead depicting it as a sprawling expanse of stars dispersed throughout space. In 1750, English astronomer Thomas Wright proposed a novel hypothesis in his work titled An Original Theory or New Hypothesis of the Universe, further expanding our understanding of the cosmos. According to Wright's speculation, the Milky Way was not a random distribution of stars in space, but a completely flat layer of stars. Plus, he also suggested that a portion of this vast structure was our own solar system. Wright's hypothesis marked progress in understanding the Milky Way structure, yet it was hindered by the observational tools of the time. With limited technology, astronomers perceived the Milky Way as the extent of the universe. However, by the early 18th century, astronomical advancements surged. By the 1920s, Edwin Hubble, utilizing the 100-inch Hooker telescope, achieved a groundbreaking breakthrough at Mount Wilson Observatory. Hubble's observations of distant nebulae revealed they weren't part of the Milky Way, but distinct galaxies, each housing billions of stars. This discovery revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. Astronomical Revelations of Andromeda Galaxy One of the closest of these galaxies was the Andromeda Galaxy, also known as EM31. In the 10th century, Persian astronomer Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi described it as a small cloud in star charts, calling it the Little Cloud. Despite lacking telescopic instruments, al-Sufi identified Andromeda with his keen eyesight. It wasn't until 1612 that Simon Marius provided a more detailed description based on telescopic observations, laying the foundation for future studies of this massive cosmic structure. Later in 1764, the renowned French astronomer Charles Messier cataloged the Andromeda Galaxy as M31 in his well-known Messier catalog mistakenly attributing its discovery to Simon Marius, unaware of al-Sufi's earlier work. But that doesn't mean that he didn't have a major hand in putting Andromeda on the map. For almost 100 years after this, astronomers all over the world were trying to understand more and more about this mysterious galaxy, each adding to the last one's findings. A significant leap in understanding the nature of the Andromeda Galaxy occurred in 1864, when the English astronomer William Huggins made a groundbreaking observation. He studied the spectrum of Andromeda and noticed that it was different from that of a typical gaseous nebula. That paved the way for the world to really get to know Andromeda for what it really is. The Andromeda Galaxy, a colossal cosmic structure that resides relatively close to us in the vast expanse of space, has captured the awe and curiosity of astronomers for centuries. Its mass, estimated to be between 1 and 2 trillion times that of our Sun, underscores its immense scale and significance in the cosmic landscape. 
Through decades of research and observation, scientists have gleaned fascinating insights into the origins and evolution of this ancient cosmic entity. Believed to be around 10 billion years old, Andromeda's age hints at a rich and complex history of formation and development. One prevailing hypothesis suggests that Andromeda emerged from the merging of several smaller proto-galaxies over billions of years. This gradual process of galactic accretion, driven by the relentless force of gravity, has shaped the majestic structure that we behold today. Recent research has challenged long-held beliefs about the size difference between Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxies. While Andromeda's vastness has been a focal point, new findings have prompted scientists to reassess its mass compared to our own galaxy. Despite these revisions, Andromeda's massive size, with a diameter of around 220,000 light-years, remains widely accepted among astronomers. This newfound perspective underscores the complexities inherent in measuring the mass of galaxies with precision. Galaxies are intricate systems composed of stars, gas, dust, and dark matter, whose distribution and movements influence their overall mass. Accurately determining these values requires advanced observational techniques and rigorous analysis, a feat made possible only with modern tools and technology. Depths of the Active Galactic Nucleus Although by far one of the most fascinating features of the Andromeda Galaxy is its active galactic nucleus, AGN. The active galactic nucleus, popularly known as AGN, is a highly energetic region at the center of a galaxy. It is characterized by intense emissions across various wavelengths, from radio waves to X-rays. AGNs are powered by the presence of a supermassive black hole at the heart of the galaxy. These supermassive black holes are incredibly dense regions in space where an enormous amount of mass is concentrated within a very small volume. When astronomers observe the active galactic nucleus using advanced telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope, they notice a very interesting phenomenon. The AGN appears to have two points of concentration, meaning there are two distinct regions where light and other forms of radiation are emanating more intensely than in the surrounding areas. The brighter concentration is the second point of focus, which is just slightly off the true galactic center. Within this area lies the supermassive black hole. The mass of this black hole has been estimated to be between 1.1 to 2.3, multiplied by 10 to the power of 8 solar masses, which means it weighs approximately 110 to 230 million times as much as our sun. Supermassive black holes are believed to be common in the centers of galaxies including our own Milky Way. As a result, they play a crucial role in the evolution and dynamics of galaxies, when matter such as gases and stars ventures too close to the gravitational behemoth that is a supermassive black hole, a fascinating cosmic dance ensues. This interaction triggers the formation of an accretion disk, a swirling maelstrom of material orbiting the black hole. As this disk spirals inward, drawn inexorably by the black hole's immense gravity, it undergoes a transformation of monumental proportions. The intense gravitational forces at play cause the materials within the disk to heat up to staggering temperatures and causes an outpour of a torrent of radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum. One of the most captivating phenomena resulting from this cosmic ballet can be observed in the heart of galaxies hosting active galactic nuclei, Aegeans. Take, for instance, the Andromeda Galaxy, a celestial neighbor to our own Milky Way. Here, astronomers have trained their instruments upon the Aegean nestled within, scrutinizing its every nuance with meticulous precision. Amidst the vast expanse of stars and cosmic dust, they discern a curious anomaly, a bright point of concentration near the central supermassive black hole. What gives rise to this luminous spectacle is nothing short of awe-inspiring.
At the heart of the Andromeda galaxy lies a gravitational colossus, a supermassive black hole whose titanic mass exerts an irresistible pull on everything in its vicinity. As stars orbit around this gravitational titan, they trace elliptical paths reminiscent of the planets orbiting our own sun. Yet, unlike the orderly procession of planets in our solar system, the dance of stars around a supermassive black hole is a chaotic and unpredictable affair. Each stellar encounter with the black hole is fraught with peril and possibility. Some stars are fortunate enough to skirt the event horizon, their trajectories altered but ultimately unscathed. Others, however, venture too close and are swallowed whole by the insatiable maw of the black hole, their constituent matter adding to the growing mass of the accretion disk. It is within this swirling cauldron of cosmic debris that the Andromeda galaxy's AGN finds its wellspring of luminosity. At a certain point in their elliptical orbits, stars come closest to the black hole, and this point is called the perihelion. At the perihelion, the gravitational forces are at the strongest they can ever be, causing the stars to move at their highest speeds. This is when the stars bunch up and become more concentrated in space around the black hole. As they bunch up, the stars release energy in the form of radiation, including visible light and other types of electromagnetic radiation. The increased concentration of stars and the release of radiation create the brighter point of concentration that astronomers observe in the galactic core of Andromeda's AGN. This distinctive feature provides valuable clues about the gravitational dynamics and interactions between the supermassive black hole and the surrounding stars. The Andromeda galaxy also has another super interesting feature an abundance of globular clusters. These globular clusters are tight groups of stars that orbit around the center of the galaxy, kind of like satellites revolving around a planet. Andromeda is estimated to harbor around 460 of these dense and ancient clusters, each containing hundreds of thousands to millions of stars that formed around the same time. 